Dear chess friends, welcome to your side of chess channel and welcome to a highly destructive chess game that I prepared for you today. We have here the latest version of Stockfish, the monster Stockfish 16, battling it out against another top engine seer in an amazing accelerated pun of attack of the Kadokan defense. And poof, the attack that you see now is so amazing, it's again so so brutal against such a solid opening like the Kadokan defense. And if you're bothered, maybe. Uh, by the Kadokan defense, by the possibilities of the Kadokan defense, and by this position lines that really can happen in the Kadokan defense, in my opinion, then uh, the accelerated pound of attack is a good choice for you, in my opinion. It's simply one of the best methods to destroy uh, the Kadokan defense in an early stage of the game. So, let's see now what happened. Put your seatbelts on. This will be again <laughs> brutal, brutal attack here by Stockfish 16. So, with the white pieces, the fish open with the move C4. First of all, the English opening, but then the game transposed into the Kadokan defense defense this accelerated pawn of attack so we played a little bit different move order but of course now with the same position so d5 here by uh, the seer engine breaking entering in the center of the board uh, e takes d c takes d and now d4 uh, here by stockfish simply uh, developing and of course uh, putting more pressure in the center of the board if you play d takes c4 okay it leads now into this isolated pawn structures um, here for white but then the bishop comes out with the tempo so basically black is trying to avoid this types of lines this d4 pawn can be maybe advanced in some lines to d5 then it's very annoying to handle it because it creates spaces knight to c3 will happen supporting simply the pressure uh, simply uh, here the pawn knight to f3 queen to e2 bishop to e3 can be also played so in my opinion this is the line that sh black should try to avoid so after move d4 knight to f6 played by seer knight Knight to c3, e6, knight to f3, normal development, so this position has been played many, many times in top GML, for instance, there is a game Carlson versus Dominguez Perez Liner, Anish Giri versus Alexander Grishuk, Temur Ajabov against Mar Morozovic, so this line is very, very often played in high chess level. So, after move knight to f3, bishop to b4, now Stockfish releases the pressure in the center of the board by playing c takes d5, knight to d5, of course, by the seer engine, because this line leads still into this um, isolated pawn structures for white, so black doesn't want to take out uh, the pawn with the e pawn, then of course we have a symmetry and uh, this is nothing spectacular here also for black. So black relies simply on this weakness that white is here, this isolated d pawn. Uh, after move knight to d5, Stockfish continues with bishop to d2, connects now the bishop to the knight, keeps everything compact, and now knight to c6 normal development. Bishop to d3, placing the bishop on a very very active uh, square from this square the bishop has great activity on both sides the downside also for black a little bit is when knight is playing this blockade with the move knight to d5 against the isolated pawn black has left now uh, here also the protection the protection of the h7 um, h7 score so you cannot get everything uh, when you play with the black pieces you cannot defend basically everything now as we said we have the perfect blockade but we have now a lack of defenders in front of the king because black will probably of course uh, castle on the king side so after move uh, bishop to d3 king side castle king side castling also by the fish and now knight to f6 putting more pressure against the isolated d pawn uh, here by black after move uh, knight to f6, we have a3, kicking away the bishop. Here, uh, the seer engine stays now, very active with the bishop here on a5. We have the bishop to g5, hitting now uh, here the knight to f6. The problem, of course, here for black is that you cannot take out the pawn so far. Knight to d4 is not good. Knight takes d4, let's see, it's a tactic, it's a common trap. Uh, it's, I think, really beginner's tactic here. Bishop to h7 leads to a devastating game for black. The game is over here for sure. After move uh, bishop to g5 that Stockfish played, we have now to move h6, kicking away the bishop. Stockfish stays now on this diagonal, still is pressuring the knight on f6, is not allowing here the queen to move somewhere. If that happens, of course, immediately bishop to f6 would happen after g takes f6. Black would have then many, many uh, problems, many... Um, positional problems i think weakened pawn structures also then the h6 pawn would be weak so it leads i think then in a, into a complicated positional game for for black after move bishop to h4 we have bishop to b6 putting more pressure again against the pawn on d4 we have seen 
When knight to d4 was played, knight to d4, bishop to h7 led into this position where black is losing the queen. But now uh, this pawn is attacked for the third time now by uh, another piece now by black. And many of us would try maybe something like knight to e2, retreating or something. But Stockfish had now a different, different idea in mind. And that's what I really liked about this game because this game is sort of a position that I think you could reach many, many times. Maybe not the same. But I think we have sometimes we had sometimes such an isolated pawn in our own position, and we try to simply to defend it too much. We try to simply play too passively uh, in our own games. Stockfish is a different beast. Stockfish never plays passively. When Stockfish has the opportunity to, opportunity to activate its pieces, it would do it. So that's why Stockfish played first of all the move rook to e1, left now the pawn on d4 hanging, but now Stockfish has a brutal brutal attack here uh, prepared. Pay good attention what what's going on on the board. This is really sick, sick, brutal chess. Simply chess from, from another dimension. So after move rook to e1, uh, here the seer engine accepts now the challenge. Plays now bishop to d4. Grabs now one pawn in the center of the board. But now Stockfish plays a beautiful move, knight to e4, putting more pressure against the knight on f6. And know this, okay. So far, the bishop is protecting the knight on f6. Uh, but the bishop is already endangered by the knight attack and uh, what you, what are you going to do? You can of course uh, here play something like bishop to b2 but then again you probably get kicked away. So the issue is here that the bishop is really really attacked by many many pieces of whites and that's why here g5 was first to move by the seer engine but stockfish you can guess probably what stockfish is doing stockfish plays now the impossible knight to g5 sacrificing simply the piece we have h takes g5 bishop to g5 and you see now the bishop is still endangered uh, the queen is overloaded to the defense on, on of the knight on f6 and what you do from this point on i've analyzed now many lines i've really search here for opportunities for uh, black somehow to defend this position because obviously you cannot move the bishop because you get destroyed here so one of the possible lines uh, is to maybe giving material back it's also one of the suggested line by my stockfish engine at home if you play bishop to f2 still it gets very very complicated here for black after bishop to f2 then we play king to f2 this wasn't played in the game in the game was a uh, bishop to b2 was played by the seer engine but let's see different opportunities as i said let's see this line bishop to f2 then we play king to f2 now we play knight to g4 uh you're trying to attack the king but actually king to g3 is even working here for white look at it the king uh, the queen is hanging so that's why you have to play now the move f6 after bishop to h4 what you could do is maybe to get out of this mess with the move queen to d6 but actually white can even take out now the knight on g4 you can get challenged maybe with the move e5 but now with bishop to f5 bishop to f5 king to f5 is even a possibility and there's nothing that can attack now anymore the king you can maybe try uh to attack but still we can get all of this mess will simply retreat and uh the queens will be traded off when the queens are off the board then of course the game is not so dangerous anymore so this line is in my opinion not so good here for black so let's go back after move bishop to h4 you could of course play a rook to f7 with the idea to play rook to g7 and then um, to attack the king on the g file but again uh, look at this we can simply play king to g4 if you play now e5 then we simply retreat and there's simply again no good check uh, that's why it's not working you can play of course here a check by the rook on uh, g7 but again <laughs> believe me or not in even in this scenario after rook to g7 white can escape look at this king to f4 you play e5 we get the king on e3 you get a check it seems dangerous, but stock for shields, the best calculator in in, uh, in chess. Look at this. Even after queen to b6, Stockfish can retreat here. Now look at this. After queen to b2, we cover. Now rook to g2 is going to happen. We cover. But now the problem is after rook to e2, bishop to e2, you can grab the rook here on a1, but this is not working. The queen comes now with a beautiful, beautiful tempo against the king, and uh, this attack gets now devastating here for black. Look at this. Bishop to c4, immediately a checkmate threat. You can deliver maybe a couple of checks, but never really perpetuals. And now you're running out of good checks and I'm not seeing good ways how black is going to defend his position. So see, this is a wild, wild tactical sequence. Really brutal. After move bishop to f2, we saw now this is simply not working. So let's so see also a different opportunity. Instead of this move bishop to f2, you could maybe try to play the move queen to b6. 
putting more pressure against the pawn on f2 like this. But again, this is not working. Look what happens. Knight to d4, you play queen to d4. Now this tactic with bishop to h7 obviously is not working because the queen is protected by the knight. But then queen to f3. Sneaking with the queen, uh, simply putting more pressure against the knight on f6. Now if you retreat here to e8, then bishop to h6 is going to happen. You can cover, but now look at this. Rook to e4, rook to uh, b1, rook to g4. It's a devastating attack. It's not working here, the defense for, for black. Instead of this move, for instance, knight to e8, you could also play knight to d5, really centralizing your knight. But again, this idea, rook to e4 is devastating. You can maybe try this one, knight to e5. We pick up the queen, you pick up the queen, but she takes f3. Leads into a complicated game for black. Um, white is having here an extra pawn, has also the bishop here, has a better activity. Black has dark core problems. Maybe black can fight somehow but in my opinion this is devastating especially after king to h1 rook to g1 putting more pressure on the g file in my opinion beautiful beautiful attack it would be here for white so this was our now our analysis bishop to f2 queen to b6 didn't work so both of these moves are not working here for for black so after move bishop to g5 i'm sorry if i'm complicating things too much but i really I'm dream trying uh, to see at least some kind of a defense here for black because it seemed to me maybe this is defensible. But now here the Seer engine plays now the move bishop to b2, stays now with the bishop at least for a while and protects now the knight on f6. But now Stockfish plays a beautiful rook to b1, hitting the bishop, bishop to c3. You see the Seer engine is trying to keep the bishop on the board and also on this diagonal for protecting the knight. Rook to e3, here played by Stockfish and again many many tactical problems again for black what to do for instance if you play queen to d7 if you're trying now finally to get out of this pin uh i've analyzed also this line if you play queen to d7 uh this is also not working look what happens now you play knight to d4 you're sacking simply the knight here on d4 if now bishop to d4 happens then we have rook to g3 putting more pressure against the king on the g file the rook lift now is the most devastating attack against the king what are you going to do if you play something like knight to g4 uh, to maybe somehow lock temporarily uh, the g file then you get even this one another piece sacrifice bishop to f6 uh, not allowing also a black king to escape to the h file if you play now bishop to f6 then queen to g4 leads into immediate checkmate in instead of this move knight to g4 if you try to maybe create yourself some escape routes for the king by playing the move rook to d8 then bishop to f6 of course comes with the tempo now king to f8 will probably be played by black but actually rook to g8 is winning the game again decoying the king to the g file now queen to g4 and now it's an amazing checkmate so queen to d7 is not working because of this possibilities of knight to d4 and then rook to g3 so let's go back after move rook to e3 you see the bishop is always a problem here we are attacking always the bishop that's protecting the knight and that's why the queen is always overloaded to the defense of the knight which is really really crazy position so that's why here knight to e7 was played by the seer engine the seer engine is trying to at least bring a new defender in front of the king somehow settling the position on the g file trying really to play some kind of a defensive structure but now from knight to e7 stockfish simply continues knight to h4 is of course trying somehow to sneak in with the queen somewhere uh maybe here on f3 g3 so putting more pressure against the king of course we have bishop to d4 hitting the rook but obviously rook to g3 and there's not so much that can be done here uh against this attack on the g file so that's what we have here knight to g6 the only move to survive somehow this attack queen to e2 by stockfish queen to d6 finally uh, Seer gets out of this pin by the bishop on g5, but now it's simply too late. Look at this bishop to g6, f takes g6, knight takes g6, hits the rook, and now f rook to f7. Uh, again, with the idea to compete somehow on the g file, the defensive idea is to play rook to g7. Uh, now, Stockfish plays an amazing move, knight to e5, um, sacrificing even the knight temporarily, of course, because after bishop to e5, we have this resource, bishop to f4 putting the pressure against the king and what you do if you play rook to g7 again this wasn't playing the game look at this bishop to e5 we hit the queen you have to step back we hit now the knight on f6 uh this is 
really, really brutal what the fish is doing now after a couple trades of pieces. Queen to g4 is going to happen for sure. So that's why you have to play queen to f5. But now again, this idea, rook to b4, rook to g4 is a devastating, devastating attack here by, by Stockfish. So it's simply too much pressure here. The bishop is never, really never coming out into the game. Even if you try something like queen to f6 here, then rook to g4 hits the king. Where are you going to go? Queen to c2, queen to b3 is going to happen. If you go to the f file, of course, uh, here, then it gets rook to f4. So it's simply not working. This pressure is simply too much to handle here for, for black. So... Let's go back. After move uh, bishop to f4, that stockfish play. That's why here the seer engine tried to escape with the move king to f8. Tried somehow to get the king on the queen side, but this is never working against the stockfish engine. Stockfish simply plays bishop to e5. After queen to c5, still black is up a piece. But this bishop on c8 never played this rook on a8, never played in the game. It's almost like you played in the beginning without two pieces. Really, really wild stuff. After move rook to d1 and king to e8 in this particular position, the seer engine uh, resigned. So, what's the issue here? Instead of this move, uh, king to e8, you could have maybe played knight to d5. I've always searched for this defensive resource, putting the knight on the d-file, somehow locking the d-file. Uh, somehow keeping the position compact but actually it's again not working look at this bishop to d4 queen drops back queen comes into the game you're trying of course to escape but now the rook is coming into the game on the uh, back rank finally you have liberated maybe the back rank but uh, now uh, the rook is putting more pressure you cannot play of course bishop to d7 develop yourself you maybe try some time to attack the queen the queen comes here now rook to d8 for instance can happen um uh, putting more pressure against the uh, against the king bishop to d7 is devastating so you lose the rook you can of course instead of this move rook to d8 also play queen to h8 simply supporting the 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 back rank attack here by both of the spaces so it's also not working it's a game over here for black so let's go back after move uh, as we said king to e8 instead of this move knight to d5 king to e8 was played by the seer engine trying to defend this position like this but as we also said in this particular position seer resigned still i've analyzed i've continued now the analysis look what actually happens if you play king to e8 then rook to c3 is devastating you have to step back with the queen now we play rook to h3 trying a, a dangerous check on the back rank you could cover maybe the back rank but now we attack simply the knight you're trying to escape but now with uh, we're cutting off here uh, the seventh rank and now the queen is coming into the game you play something like bishop to d7 but now first the check and now after a couple of uh, dangerous checks there is even this idea putting the pieces on the seventh rank and whatever you do for instance you play something like queen to d8 then it's a beautiful checkmate here with the move queen to b7 uh, the same thing happens if you play queen to b6 then we have this checkmate queen to d7 you cannot pick up the queen because of the rook activity you cannot escape here to b8 because of the bishop activity so I really don't want to show you now every possible variation, but uh, this is obvious that um, black is losing. There's simply too much pressure. You're getting attacked from every side of the board. Uh, really, really amazing, amazing, uh, brutal attacking formation again by Stock for 60. So, poo, what to say about this game? This is really crazy how Stockfish is playing these attacking games, how Stockfish destroys, dismantles this solid openings like the Kato Khan, in my opinion. Really, really beautiful, beautiful game again, played by Stockfish 16. Okay, if you want to see more brutal attacks like this, check out our comments and chess games played by computers. Uh, here's the link of our playlist. And if you like this content, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. See you soon with some more videos. And what do we say? Chess is the best, of course.